welcome as um, the Dr. Chris Braden. Dr. Chris Braden is a deputy director of the National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Disease at the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, uh, thanks, thanks to you and for, of, of course for the others to, to be present with us today. And I, I would like to know how does the US CDC invest in laboratory and surveillance systems and what impact does this have on cholera control by now? Dr. Gris Braden, the floor is yours. Well, thank you to the organizers for the invitation to present at this important event. And thank you, Mark, for this question. As has been highlighted by the speakers on this panel, surveillance serves as the bedrock for public health. Estimates of burden of disease, outbreak identification and control, hotspot determination, and program metrics of success are all based on the collection, analysis, and interpretation of surveillance data. The US CDC has the capacity to serve as a technical support agency working with WHO, ministries, and other partners to build public health capacity in our global community. CDC has offices and staff working in over 60 countries, in addition to subject matter experts working from CDC headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Often, public health capacity enhancements start with laboratory and surveillance programs. I will briefly describe several examples where CDC has played a role. Outbreak response brings, partner, brings partners together to face an acute public health threat. For CDC, the largest such recent response was in Haiti in 2000, when cholera exploded across that country. Establishing laboratory and field capacity and surveillance protocols to track the trajectory trajectory of the epidemic was a primary objective. Now that capacity is used for a different reason. Cholera has been controlled in Haiti, and the test now is to demonstrate elimination, which can involve intensive surveillance efforts. Supported by the Gates Foundation through the GF, GTFCC, we are working closely with PAHO and the Ministry of Public Health and Population on this activity. Cholera preparedness is a related situation. During the Latin American epidemic in 1991 through 2000, we supported outbreak response surveillance in affected countries while simultaneously training the as yet unaffected countries and how to recognize cholera clinically and confirm it in the laboratory in a timely manner. So to provide the opportunity for rapid response and control. One of the most important conversations we have with partners is in investing in their own preparedness to plan for change and to foster implementation of practices to maintain competency. Staff turnover is a big issue. So we share information and procedures on training new staff and in performing competency assessments. Environmental surveillance is a component of cholera surveillance that CDC has also supported. This tends not to be direct testing of drinking water or other samples for the presence of toxigenic Vibrio cholera O1, although we have done that in special situations. But it is focused on ensuring that drinking water has sufficient levels of chlorine or is free from E. coli or other indicators of fecal contamination. This is a core public health capacity that can protect against cholera and against many other waterborne infections but it is often lacking in many countries where cholera is endemic or epidemic. Of course, we cannot build capacity in any area without workforce development. In the larger context, CDC supports field epidemiology and laboratory training programs in many countries, which serve as the pipeline for competent staff to grow and enhance laboratory networks and surveillance systems. Specific to cholera, we have worked with the GTFCC to develop training protocols for culture-based identification of Vibrio cholera, antimicrobial susceptibility tests, and laboratory quality assurance best practices. We also routinely include hands-on training for the contextual use of rapid diagnostic tests. Despite their limitations, for example, relatively poor sensitivity and specificity, 
Rapid diagnostics play an important role in surveillance and outbreak detection. Laboratory networks and surveillance programs require adaptive data systems. CDC has worked with WHO and ministries to invest in the development and enhancement of health information systems, for example, DHIS2. These systems can provide critical human resources and tools for cholera surveillance and response programs. These are a few examples of how CDC invests in laboratory and surveillance systems to support ending cholera, a global roadmap to 2030. There are many other examples as others in this event can attest. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>